Hey guys, it's Todd from FormulaOneBlog.com. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Rolling Speed. Today I'm going to talk to you about Williams Hybrid Power. Now I get a lot of emails and they kind of go like this. Dear Todd, if Williams Hybrid Power flywheel system is so good, why don't they use them in F1? Yours truly, Herbie Blash. So the issue on the hybrid power is really this. Williams have designed a great system. It's basically a flywheel that spins and generates energy that feeds back into the system for more power. Now back in the old days, they had tractors with big flywheels on them. Now these flywheels were huge, they had a lot of weight, and if you could get those spinning at a decent clip, you could generate a lot of power to deploy back into the tractor. It worked great. But if you want to put that into a racing car, there's a little bit of an issue. It's too big, it's too heavy. So what Williams did is they thought, well, let's make a smaller flywheel. Now this isn't new to Williams. Automotive companies have been doing this for a long time. But Williams said, what if we made it really small and carbon fiber and light? It's a great idea. You reduce the size of the flywheel, put it in a container in the driver's seat, and make it out of carbon fiber, and it's less weight. That's all a great idea. Williams system is about 330 pounds. That's pretty good. But the problem becomes that the smaller the flywheel and the less weight, the less energy it really generates. So, in order to compensate that, you gotta spin that sucker really fast. And as we all know, it's human nature. If we stand around anything that's spinning really, really fast, you start to go, whoa, and you back away from it, right? Well, the flywheel for Williams spins at about 40,000 RPM, and some suggest that it could get up to like 70,000 RPM over time. That's really fast. And if you consider that I'm sitting in the driving seat and this thing's spinning next to me at 40,000 RPM, you get a little nervous. But the good thing is that the Williams system is contained at a very substantial housing and if it did go wrong, it would fall into small pieces and carbon dust and a glass bottom would actually break away and the debris would fall out harmlessly and away from the driver. So how actually does this work? Well, it's great. When you brake, the system generates electricity in the regenerative braking system. It feeds that energy to the flywheel, spins the flywheel, and and then when you apply throttle, it works completely in reverse. That energy now comes from the flywheel, goes back to the system to independent motors on each wheel. Now the cool thing about this, folks, is that you can do torque vectoring with this. The system knows what racetrack you're at and it knows by distance traveled what corner you're at. So when you apply the throttle, the system actually applies the exact amount of boost that you need for that particular corner. Too much boost is not effective or too little. You get the point. So the beauty of this system is really this. It's small, it's lightweight, it generates power, it's spinning really fast to accomplish that type of energy you need for a six to eight second boost. And it you know, has a fail safe device and falls out, poops out the bottom if it has an issue. This is pretty good. So good that Porsche uses it in GT racing and then Audi, no stranger to brilliant engineering, well they just adopted the Williams system last year at Le Mans, used it in their LMP1 program. All right, all right, so you're like Herbie. You're saying, hey, what's the deal? If it's so good, why don't we use an F1? Here's why. Wait, 300 pounds, right? Where are you going to put 300 pounds in a Formula One car? It's difficult to do. Now, in the past, the FIA allowed Formula One cars to play with some ballast. They could adjust the balance of their car by moving weight to and fro towards the front, towards the back, or whatever they needed. But imagine, if you will, a 300 pound chunk of metal in that car. It's hard to hide, it's hard to balance. And the FIA now relegates the teams to a certain area of ballast where they can move. They have a disproportionate amount in the back, that doesn't work. Disproportionate amount of weight in the front, that doesn't work either. The FIA says you can have only a certain amount of weight in the front, certain amount of the weight in the back, and then you're left with a 300 pound chunk of metal, and what are we gonna do, and where are we gonna put it? It's unfortunate, because the system really, really is good. And we get a lot of questions about it. Why does Grace call it the ninja flywheel of death? Well, that's it. Anything spinning at 40, 50, 60,000 RPM has a tendency to become an object of death. It's human nature. We back away from anything. You put a G.I. Joe on a string, not that I did this, and you swing it around, you know, you get that sucker going at 20,000 RPM, everybody in the neighborhood backs away. So in the end, for six to eight seconds of boost, it's a great system. It's really cool. The GT series, they've used it for quite a while. Audi's used it to great effect, the first hybrid power car to ever win Le Mans using electric power. So it's a great system. Unfortunately, it just doesn't deploy itself in Formula One. The form factor is still too heavy and it doesn't work. Ultimately, in order to get in a Formula One car, it's gotta come down in weight. And if it's gonna come down in weight, it has to come down in size and the material it's made out of. 
I'm not saying it could be in Formula One, but for all of you new to Formula One, weight is a key factor. So if we made this system smaller, and we made it lighter weight, and we put it in a Formula One car where it didn't have a radical effect on the weight distribution and balance of a car, then it might work. But I'm thinking that sucker's got to be spinning at 100,000 RPM. I hope this helped you understand the flywheel that Williams makes, why it's a great piece of kit, why the GT racing, endurance racing all use it. It's a great piece of gear, it really is. It's very successful. Williams are geniuses for coming up with it. That program is still housed in Williams Formula One area and it is a terrific innovation. However, it just doesn't apply to Formula One cars. Formula One, for my money, if it's gonna use cars, it needs to be innovative and Williams have done that. They've been very innovative. Who knows, in time they may make a type of system that will work and give the right amount of boost for a Formula One car. Until then, we'll have to wait and see. For you veterans out there, you already know what this means, but for new people to Formula One, I hope this has helped. The fact is, leave your comments in the section below. Let me know anything I've left out or add to this story and let us know what you think about the Williams Hybrid Power System or how it may apply to Formula One. You can check that out and I also will leave the link to Williams Hybrid Power's video so it explains even a little more about it if you want to learn. Until the next video, thanks for joining me on Rolling Speed. We'll see you next time.